Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about one of the moons of Jupiter known as Europa and specifically about a new discovery that might actually make this a relatively interesting place to explore because for all we know there might actually be life here after all. Welcome to What The Math. So in today's video, we're going to briefly talk about a relatively recent uh, discovery from May of uh, 2018 of essentially plumes of water around Europa. Now, this is actually not something that uh, is coming to us as a shock, because for the longest time, we've kind of suspected Europa to basically have similar uh, plumes of water as we uh, witnessed around another moon, around another planet known as Saturn. Specifically, we're talking about this beautiful moon Enceladus uh, around the uh, planet Saturn. And here, the Cassini mission actually witnessed this unusual event that you see on the bottom uh, of this moon right in here. I guess this is a slightly better angle. You can see that there are a lot of geysers and plumes coming out from essentially what would be kind of like south pole of the moon. And these are um, plumes containing a lot of water, a lot of organic molecules, and basically one of the best indicators that not only does Enceladus have uh, a liquid ocean inside, but also that there might be potential unusual types of life there, because these types of geysers indicate relatively high activity inside the planet, and possibly also uh, warmer water that might actually be enough to sustain life. All right, now this is something we've discovered uh, just a few years ago and something that we photographed quite extensively, but this is not something we've witnessed around Europa just yet. Until a more recent study basically started looking at Europa as well and realized that it seems that Europa may actually have showed us signs of these unusual uh, plumes and geysers for many, many years. We just didn't really look carefully enough. So, as a matter of fact, Hubble Telescope has witnessed several unusual uh, appearances of what seems to be water around Europa. And at the same time, we've also witnessed a relatively warm spot uh, somewhere in the region right around the equator, actually. I'm kind of slowly headed there right now. Uh, that is about five degrees warmer than everything else. And for this unusual reason, uh, we started looking at it and discovered that there was a lot more unusual plumes around it as well. We also analyzed old data from the Galileo mission that was around uh, Jupiter back in 1995 to 2003 and realized that even Galileo detected a few unusual water molecules when it passed by uh, Europa. So all of this kind of indicates to us that there's definitely something similar happening around this moon, we just haven't really photographed it yet. Uh, at the same time, we also think that uh, these unusual geysers are probably going to be uh, producing a lot of water and a lot of organic molecules that might also create a ring around Jupiter, just like um, Enceladus creates the E-ring of Saturn. So here, the new mission that's going to be um, launched in 2020, known as the Clipper mission, is hopefully going to discover all of this. First of all, it's going to actually pass by Europa uh, up to about 40 times and hopefully jump through the area where these plumes might be coming out. And first of all, discover this ring that might be here. Second of all, discover water molecules and organic molecules that might be coming off uh, Europa. But most importantly, I really, really hope they put a, uh, some sort of a device there that actually studies organic molecules in a little bit more detail because we really hope that this is how we might discover life around another object in our solar system. Because those plumes, uh, these geysers that you actually saw coming off Enceladus uh, could actually uh, be throwing off some simple organic molecules with actual organic life as well. So these things might be thrown off basically bacteria. And if we catch one, we might be able to analyze it in a little bit more detail and discover life outside of Earth. This would be a tremendous achievement for NASA and this would definitely be a groundbreaking milestone for humanity as well. 
Now, the only difference we expect to uh, have between Europa and Enceladus is, uh, well, first of all, in the location of these geysers. For Enceladus, as you saw here, it's mostly in the polar region, specifically in the South Pole. And although I'm, I'm assuming there's some in the North Pole as well and possibly in other regions, but this is really the most active region for reasons unknown to us just yet. For Europa, however, this, uh, these geysers might most likely be around the equator. And once again, for reasons who are known to us, so it would be along the region right here. And uh, some of these regions are quite easily detectable by uh, Hubble, essentially, through looking at various temperatures and differences in temperatures on the surface. And unusually, uh, some of the images from Hubble telescope detected that uh, all those, most of the regions of Europa are at a temperature of about minus 170 degrees Celsius. Some regions are about five to even six degrees warmer, and that's very strange. And so we expect that those regions might be geologically active and produce those plumes. And uh, lastly, we might not actually be lucky enough to be able to pass through those plumes because uh, it seems that unlike on Enceladus where they're constantly active, here they're a little bit more seasonal and they seem to occur only sometimes, and we don't really know why. It's probably because of some sort of a tidal effect from Jupiter, but it could also be uh, from tidal effects from a partner moon or something completely different. So we don't really know exactly why it actually happens. Well, until 2020, we can only speculate because this is when the mission is going to be launched and hopefully by the time it gets to Jupiter, which will be probably be in a few years um, after the launch, We'll be able to study this in a lot of detail and I hope by 2025, 2026, we'll know exactly what's happening here and possibly either find life or find absolutely nothing. Until then, come back tomorrow. There's going to be another video that might teach you something else and you might learn something else as well. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who loves learning about space. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.